الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين أعظم الله أجورنا وأجوركم بمصابنا بأبي عبد الله الحسين Respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us again to commemorate the martyrdom of Abi Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam and to attend the majalis of Imam al Hussein. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the opportunity to serve this community again after two years. From two years ago, I was here in Muharram and Alhamdulillah, we joined together to seek newness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through showing love to Imam al Hussein salamu uh, There's no doubt, and I'm sure everyone knows, how important it is to attend the majalis of Imam al Hussein. And I'm sure we all heard about the narrations that speak about the rewards you get from attending the gatherings of Imam Hussein. And the Sayyid before me, he mentioned some of these narrations. We all heard these narrations and we don't doubt the authenticity of these narrations and we don't doubt the importance of attending the Mujahidah of Imam Hussein. However, we should ask ourselves, how much are we benefiting from these majalis after we leave? How much do I benefit? This is something that I always ask myself when I listen to a lecture, when I attend an event. How much uh, I'm going to benefit on a practical level when I leave the centre or when I leave the lecture? It's not enough to just have some theories in my mind or to learn uh, some information and put them in my mind and that's it. This is not enough. You see, religion or Islam came to solve our problems on a practical level and not only to present theories for us. It's not a uh, religion to present theories only. This is something that is done in philosophy. In philosophy, they present theories. Theories of the universe theories of the beginning of the universe, and so on. These theories are discussed on a theoretical level, but on a practical level you don't benefit from that much. Religion shouldn't be limited to the theoretical level. Islam came to change our life, to make our lives easy. This is why if you look at the rulings of Islam, you will find that there is a ruling for every action that you could think about from the major actions of how to deal with nations to the minor actions of how to walk or how to talk or how to even take care of yourself and so on. Every single action that you perform, you'll find that Islam gave a ruling for it. Why? Because Islam wants you to concentrate on the practical level. When it comes to Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, when it comes to the majalis of Abi Abdullah salam alayhi, we should ask, what can we learn? Or we should search to find what can we learn from this majalis or from the life of the Imam alayhi salam on a practical level. You see, the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, they were appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to represent his religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he says, Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa, this khilafah was given to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and after the Prophet was given to the Imam So they had an, uh, an obligation to perform. This obligation, we can uh, summarize it by saying that they had to represent the religion of Allah. This is the obligation of the Imam. They had a mission to perform. They had a mission to perform. Every Imam had a mission. You call it a mission, you call it a movement, you call it a revolution, there's no problem with naming it. لا مشاحات في الاعتبار as they say in Usul. There's no problem with giving different names as long as the meaning is clear. The Imam, the Imam had a mission to perform. 
And this is a, a theological discussion that we have between us and the Zaydis, to mention this uh, on the side note. The Zaydis, they say, one of the conditions of an Imam is to have a, revolu uh, to have a movement. He must have a movement. And they limit the movement to the battlefield, to a military movement. As for the Shia, we say, yes, it's true that they must have a movement, but this movement is not limited to the battlefield. This, the, this movement can be a military movement, such as the movement of Imam al-Husayn. It can be a political movement, such as, the, for example, the uh, movement of Sayyid al-Zahra, salamu It can be an educational movement, such as the movement of Imam al-Baqir and al-Sadiq, and so on. But they have a mission. Imam al Hussein, when we look at his life, we find that he was able to recognize his mission from an early age. He understood that his mission was to represent the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to defend the one who is in authority. The one who is in authority. This is why, if you look at the life of Imam al Hussein during the time of his grandfather, you will find that he took part of representing Islam. When you look at the life of Imam al Hussein during the time of his mother, you will find that he took responsibility in representing Islam. During the time of his father, the same thing. During the time of his brother, Imam al Hassan, the same thing. During the time of Rasulullah, sallallahu a famous story that we all know and we celebrated just before Muharram, the incident of Mubahara where the Prophet ﷺ had to go out with his family and one of his children that the Qur'an referred to was Imam Hussain ﷺ, who stood with his grandfather back then when he was still under the age of five to represent Islam. He understood his mission and he stood to represent the religion. During the time of his mother, we read that when Sayyidah Zahra ﷺ started moving or going from one house to another, from the house of, of Al-Ansar in Al-Madina, asking them for support and help, and promoting the, the, the Khilafah of Amir al-Mumin al alayhi salam, she, she took with her Imam al-Hassan and Imam al-Hussain alayhi salam. So he took part during the movement of his mother to represent Islam. The reason why he did that is because he recognized his mission. During the time of his father, during the three battles that Imam Ali alayhi salam had from the battle of Jabal, Nahrawan, Safin, you'll find that Imam Hussain alayhi salam was one of the main soldiers in these battles. And he was fighting to represent in the defensive jihad to defend Islam and defend the one in authority being Amir al-Mumin alayhi salam. Also moving on to the time of his brother, Imam al-Hassan alayhi salam, we find that although both of them were Imams and both of them had authority from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but because Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam was standing and uh, taking uh, part in being the Khalifa we find Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam standing behind his brother supporting the one who is on authority in order to teach us how to be organized he didn't stand for once as the narration says from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, it says, مَا تَكَلَّمَ الْحُسَيْنِ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ الْحَسَنِ قَدْ Imam al-Husayn, he never spoke in the presence of Imam al-Hasan, not even once, out of respect, because he recognized his mission. His mission was to represent Islam and to defend the religion. And he knew that the best way of defending Islam and protecting the religion is by keeping everything organized, by organizing ourselves. It's not about what I want. It's not about my personal interest. It's about the interest of Islam. This is why he used to always stay quiet during the time of his brother. Also, when he became the Khalifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and he took the responsibility of being the Khalifa after his brother, we find that Imam al Hussein sallallahu alayhi wa he recognized his mission and he worked in order to fulfill or to complete his mission in Karbala. When he went out to Karbala, he knew that his mission was to stand against the oppressors, to defend the oppressed ones. This is a mission that was given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for being the Khalifa of Allah. And it's a mission that Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, his father reminded him about it on his deathbed when he said to his children, Imam al-Hasan and Imam al-Hussein, 
ونال الظالم خصما وللمظلوم عونا stand against the oppressors and defend or support the oppressed ones. This, is, this was the mission of Imam al -Fasay. And he completed his mission. He worked on completing his mission. And the fruits that we taste today from the movement of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, it, it's a clear evidence that his mission was successful, or he was successful in his mission. Everything we have today is due to the message of Abi Abdullah alayhi salam. All the power that we have today as Shia is due to the movement of Abi Abdullah sallallahu alayhi As the late Sayyid Imam al-Khumayni rahmatullah says, كُلُّ مَا لَدَيْنَ مِنْ عَشْرَةً Everything we have is from Ashura. And this is a very wise quote or saying from the late Imam that represents the truth. Everything we have as Shia, as Muslims, is from this revolution. Because Imam al-Fasayn recognized his mission, he was successful in, in his movement. The same thing can be said about those surrounding Abi Abdullah or those who were around Abi Abdullah salam, in Karbala. Great personalities that we can learn from. It is true that when it comes to Muharram, the first one that comes to mind is Imam al Hussein. And the second that comes to mind after Imam al Hussein salam alayhi, is either Abu al Fadl al Abbas alayhi salam, or Sayyidah Zainab. Salam alayhi alayhi. They come after Imam al Hussein. If you look at the life of, Imam, of Abu al Fadl al Abbas, alayhi salam, you'll find that he also was able to recognize his mission. He understood that his mission was to defend the Khalifa of Allah and to protect the religion of Allah. This was his mission. And this is why you find that for the last moment of his life, he was standing to fulfill his mission in front of Allah. He didn't let anything stand in the way of completing this mission. You see, sometimes when we are doing some work, if we feel a bit sick or we feel tired, we sit down and say, I can't be bothered to, to, to do this work. If we go through a, a bit of pain, whether it's a physical pain or an emotional pain, when we hear someone attacking us, for example, someone spreading rumors about us, we give up. We say, that's it, I don't want to do this work anymore. Why? The reason behind this is because we failed, or some of us failed to, recognize their mission. If someone succeeded in, or is able to recognize his mission, he would not let anything stand in the way of completing his mission. Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salam, when the enemies came and cut his right hand, and you've heard this, this story, what did he say? He said, Wallahi in qata'atuhu yameeni inni uhami abadan an deeni. By Allah, even if you cut my right hand, I will keep defending my religion. Because he recognized his mission. And I will keep defending the righteous Imam, the son of Rasulullah, who was known to be uh, truthful and trustworthy. He recognized his mission to defend Islam and to defend Imam Hussein alayhi salam. For the last moments, he was fulfilling his mission. The same thing can be said about Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam. Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam, she understood or recognized her mission. She knew that her mission was to represent Islam and to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a strong connection between Zainab alayhi salam and between Tawheed. And this is something that inshallah one of the brothers or sisters can shed some light on. Uh, when one night speak to speak about Zainab and Tawheed. From an early age, Zainab alayhi salam was aware about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She was aware about the Tawheed of Allah. It is mentioned that once Amir al Mu'min alayhi salam was sitting with Zainab, he said to her, Bunayya quli wahid, say one. She said one. He said to her, Bunayya quli ifnan, say two. She didn't say anything. So Amir al Mu'min asked her, Why you stayed quiet? She said to him, I don't wish to mention anything after I mentioned the one. She linked the number one to Allah and the Tawheed of Allah. Zainab alayhi salam, because she recognized her mission and she submitted, completely submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when she came and stood next to the body of Sayyidu Shuhada, with all the pain that she felt, 
And you know, it's not easy to, to witness such a thing. Even if you are in the highest level of, of Iman, it's still not easy. Even if you are infallible, it's still not easy. They are still human beings. The Ahlul Bayt are human, be human beings and they have more emotions than us when it comes to these things. It wasn't easy for Zainab. But when she stood and she recognized her, her mission and submitted to Allah, she raised her hands and said, Allahumma taqabbal minna hadha al-qurban. Aradita ya Rabb, Allahumma khud hatta tawdah. Are you satisfied? Are you pleased? Ya Allah, Allah, say it until you are pleased. Because she recognized her mission. And when she stood in front of Ibn Ziyad, and Ibn Ziyad tried to humiliate Islam, and to humiliate the path that Zainab salam was representing, he said to her, كَيْفَ رَأَيْتِ سُنَعَ اللَّهِ بِأَحْنِكَ الْحُسَيْنِ How do you see what Allah did to your brother Hussein? Out of respect to the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because she recognized her mission, and she knew that she had to represent Islam, and to keep Islam away from humiliation, she said to him, مَا رَأَيْتُ إِلَّا جَمِيلًا I see nothing except beauty. If someone, didn't, uh, if someone fails to recognize his mission, he would not be able to stand and take such a stance like Sayyidah Zainab alayhi A third person that comes after Imam al Hussein, after Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas and Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam is Ali al-Akbar salam Allah alayhi. Ali al-Akbar is another purified person who recognized his mission in Karbala. It is mentioned that when Imam al Hussein reached alayhi salam, reached the borders of Karbala, he said, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Ali al-Akbar asked his father. You see, you've heard these stories, but sometimes because we, we're, we, we hear these stories every year, we don't stand and reflect on them. But let's, let's see how he recognized his mission, Ali al-Akbar Ali al-Akbar, he said to his father, why did you say this? Why did you say, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raja'un? Imam al-Fazir he said to him, I hear a voice from the unseen telling me that this land is going to be the graveyard for you and your family. We are walking towards death and death is walking towards you. Someone who is in his early 20s, Ali al-Akbar was in his 20s, hearing this, would, he would ask his father, do we have enough power? Do we have enough weapon? Do we have enough support? This is something that comes to your mind, the first thing that comes to your mind. Do, you, do we have all this? Can we stand in front of the enemy? Can we save ourselves? Or let's run away? He was able to say that. He was able to leave. Ali al-Akbar alayhi salam, he asked his father one question. He said to him, Alasna ala al -haq? Are, we not, are we not on the truth? He said to him, yes, by Allah we are. Then he said, إِذَنْ لَا نُبَالِيَا وَقَعْنَ عَلَى الْمَوْتِ أَوْ وَقَعَ الْمَوْتِ عَلَيْهِ Then we should not care whether we fall upon death or death falls upon us. Because he recognized his mission, he said this and he took this stance. The same thing can be said about the companions of Abi Abdullah al Hussein salamu alayhi The companions of Abi Abdullah al Hussein in the last night, Imam al Hussein said to them, you are free to leave. This is the night it came. It's dark now. Go your way. You're free to go your way. One of his companions he said to him, should we, should we leave you, should we leave you, Ya Abu Abdullah? Why should we leave you? To stay alive after you? There is no beauty, there is no meaning for life after you, Ya Hussein. This was said because they were able to recognize their mission. Another companion, when Imam al said to them, leave, he said to him, by Allah, لو أني أعلم أني أقتل ثم أذبح ثم أحرق ثم أنشر في الهواء وضر في الهواء يفعل بذلك ألف مر ألف مرة ما تركتك يا حسين. By Allah, if I know that I will be killed, then slaughtered, then cut into pieces, then burned, and they do this thousand times with my body, I would not leave you, Ya Hussein. He said that because he recognized his mission. They were successful in their life because they recognized their mission. Your mission in life is to recognize your mission. 
This is something that you should uh, reflect on. Your mission in life is to recognize your mission. So what is your mission? What is your mission? So have fun. Some people, they live their entire life without having a mission. You ask, you ask them when, when they are studying at school, for example, what do you want to do after you finish school? They say, I don't know. I don't know what to do. They finish school, they wait for an opportunity to come to them. Either they go to TAFE, go to university. After they finish studying, they sit down waiting for an opportunity to start working. They don't have a mission in their life. They, they work in a, in, a certain, uh, in, a, in a certain place without progressing. It's like a machine that works without progressing until it dies. They live their entire life without having a mission. When you have a mission, you don't wait for opportunities. You create them. You create your opportunities. You don't follow your mission in your free time, but rather you use all your time to complete your mission. You don't let any excuse to prevent you from continuing your work. If a door closes, you open another one. If a road ends, you pave a new one to continue your mission. This is the difference between someone who has a mission and someone who doesn't. You know, usually they say a mission it includes uh, traveling. When, you, when someone wants to perform a mission, it includes traveling. But a spiritual mission, it doesn't need or require you to travel to anywhere except to yourself. The only place that you need to travel is to your own soul, to your own nafas, to the essence of your humanity. This is where you need to travel. And this is where the first step, this is the first step that you need to take in order to find your mission, to know yourself. There's a hadith of narration that is attributed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad He says, Man arafa nafsahu faqad arafa rabbah Whoever recognizes himself has recognized his Lord. If someone is able to recognize himself, he will be able, he will be able to recognize his Lord. In some sayings, they say that the heart of a believer is the true house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The heart of the believer. This is where everything starts from. All the things that you want in this life exist within you. All the treasures that you're looking for exist within you. All the knowledge that you want exists within you. The Prophet they came to help you to discover this knowledge, this knowledge that you have. But it all exists inside of you. So if you want to find a mission, you need to work on understanding yourself, to understand the powers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you, to see your strength and to see your weakness, to work on your, your strength and to also work gradually to strengthen this weakness that you have. There's no doubt that we all have weakness in us. Complete power is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The creation, they have weakness. We all have weakness. But this weakness shouldn't prevent us from progressing in life. In fact, weakness should encourage us to progress in life. And the truth is that the weakness you feel in yourself is the only thing that pushes you to progress in life. But you don't feel that. Or you don't notice that. It is the weakness that you feel that helps you to progress in life. Let me give you an example, or two examples. When you go and study at school, when you go and study at university, why do you do that? You do that because you recognize that you have some weakness. You don't have all the knowledge and you want to see more knowledge. Correct? If you had a divine knowledge, would you go and study? No, you wouldn't go and study. The weakness that you find in yourself, it encourages you to go and study, to progress in life. Okay. Then you go and search for the required or the acquired knowledge. Another example. When people 
let's say, for the year, when they go let's, and um, they go to train, they go to the gym to train. If they go the first day, they start training, they find that they can't lift heavy. They feel weak. This weakness that they feel, it pushes them to work harder, pushes them to struggle, pushes them to be patient in order for them to lift heavy. Correct? If from the first day you found yourself strong, you had all the muscles that you want, would you go and spend an hour training at the gym? No, you, you won't do that. The weakness that you find in yourself pushes you to work. This is something that can be applied in everything we want to do in life, whether you are at school, university, at work, in the community. If you feel any weakness, this weakness shouldn't prevent you from working, rather it should encourage you to progress in your life. So find out what your mission is. I can't tell you what your mission is. I can't come and force a mission on you. This is a personal journey that you have to do. And these 10 nights are a great opportunity for us to find a mission for us. Every single one must go on this personal journey in, all, in order to find their mission in life in, and in order for them to be successful. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, he recognized himself and through recognizing himself, he recognized Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when he recognized Allah, he recognized his mission and due to that, he received the blessing of becoming Safina to Najah, the Ark of Salvation that the Sayyid is speaking about. And he received the blessing of becoming Sayyid al Shuhada. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyid wa Mulai wa Ba'atullah al Husayn wa ala al Rahim that he held at the Finai to Allah had the Rahli to Alaikum Mini Salam, Allah he abode in Mabaki, while Mabaki and Laylu and Naha, while I Jalahullah, Akhir al Hadim in the Ziaratikum. السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين والسلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته صلوات